Hello everybody, this is another video I've come across from the Muslim Lantern on evolution. It was released before his ridiculous two hour long presentation with Subor Ahmed, which I have already thoroughly debunked. I will do an analysis of this video and offer my comments. Yes. Right. Let, let me ask you a question. What do you think? Or how do you? Yeah. What do you think about evolution? What do you think about evolution? So, yeah. our perspective of me personally, or as Muslims generally? As a Muslim, or every yeah, the, yeah. as you wish. You me personally, the, the, me, yeah. I completely reject the idea of evolution. Me personally, me. Yeah. based on my research, I completely uh, deny the idea of evolution. Seeing the the amount of fraud that they play and the games that they play to try to justify the theory of evolution scientifically, in their own magazines, they will claim lies that the same magazine would refute. Right. That, so, that's what we're going to say. Right. So, this is my perspective. My personal perspective when it comes to the theory. What I'm trying to say basically is it's not like you have to re whole, wholesale reject evolution to be honest. Do you what I'm trying to say to you, right? Yeah. But my position is yeah. like. Yeah, I'm talking to you, so let's go yeah. with your position. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's my position. Yeah. Right? I wholesale reject it based on my, on my research, based on looking at uh, certain people who made. Uh, Different series is explaining the evidence, right? So, but for example, so, so so let's say you you see I don't know thirty different uh, breeds of dogs. Do you think that all of those breeds came from the yeah of, from the creation or a human? How does tell you evolution is? This is what evolution is. Evolution is the change in heritable characteristics of biological populations over successive generations. These characteristics are passed on from parent to offspring during reproduction. Dog breeds are all the same species, Canis lupus familiaris. They are the result of artificial selection by humans, but it's still evolution. No, but like, like speciation, or look, yeah. same for example, two different species mating with one, or two close, close, close species mating with one another, producing another species. No one is rejecting that; it can be observable. Like so, so, so we can modify a species. A donkey mole, right? A whole sort of a, a donkey have an intercourse, and yeah. producing a mole. That's yeah. an observable thing that no one rejects. Okay. Right? But the point we're making is evolution does not. It's not about the idea of the same species. It's the idea of one species. Yeah, 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 indeed, yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. This, this is the problem. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the extreme. Initially, yeah. the evolution means that you have one species, and it starts to. Transition and you have a deviation yeah, no, no, until it creates you have a, a fish, a, right? That starts walking. And yeah, 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 yeah. All I mean, creation today. Yeah, yeah. You, should, you start from one species and it yeah. slowly starts to transition no, until it becomes from a, a cell. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the first cell comes from abiogenesis and the creation of self-replicating molecules, which then evolve a cell wall. These videos by Professor Dave explains give a good description. They claim, okay, there is something called the Homo erectus, even though you have no evidence for the Homo erectus. There is plenty of evidence for Homo erectus. A simple Google search will show you. Zero. What they do, they bring different bones from different animals from different yeah. things. And they say, we do not know, they could be bones from different things. And they make, put certain bones together and then they draw a picture. They discard a huge number of genes that are not in line. In the study, they say to you, in the study, in the paper, we discarded X amount of genes. That's why they did the same experiment with the banana, 50% or 60%. Just depends on which collection do you use and which method do you use to say this gene is in exact correlation with this gene. Right? There are different comparison methods but they all give consistent results with regards to similarities in the DNA between different species. They all show humans and chimpanzees and bonobos as our closest related species, having divulged from a common ancestor. Why do they do this? Why? They have to try to convince a person like you or the layman. Look, we have evidence. The genes are the evidence. The fossil record is the evidence. You look at the fossil record, they say to you. No, but I mean, when I see, I, I see bears, let's say, I see if, if, uh, five different species of bears. You have like, you know, the grizzly, the polar, the black bear, I don't know. Um, to me, they look very, very much the same. And it, 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 it wouldn't be crazy to think that they come from the I same place. It's yeah. very simple and it's very, it is very, it, it would make sense to come from the same, they come from the same creator. So he's saying that similarities are not from a common ancestor, but from a common creator. This is a frequent creationist myth, that of common design. Luckily, Dr. Dan of the Excellent Creation Myths channel has done a video on this, which I will link in the description. In summary, the hypothesis of common ancestry allows us to make predictions about similar genes in separate species. This video mentions nested hierarchies. I have included a description of this from the Berkeley University in the description. In addition, the endogenous retroviruses demonstrate strong evidence for common ancestry. Just looking at human chimp common ancestry, 
The position of the endogenous retroviruses demonstrate common ancestry between humans and chimpanzees that, if from chance, would be astronomically improbable. This video by John Perry explains this well. I will also link it in the description. Why you call now it's called homology? Homology has been debunked. Homology is that the similarities are due to common ancestors. It's what users said. That's the term for it. Scientific yeah. term. Okay, okay, right? okay. It's called homology. Homology has been debunked. Why? There are many reasons for it. For example, saber tooth tiger. You can Google it. Saber tooth tiger is a tiger with saber tooth. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were from, from, from any tiger ancestors. The saber tooth tiger is the common name for species in the Smilodon genus, specifically Smilodon fatalis. It is not closely related to the tiger or other modern cats, but it is still within the family Felidae, which is the family of mammals referred to as cats. This ancestral tree shows how the saber toothed tiger and modern tigers are related. Both are highlighted by the red arrows. He doesn't explain why this is evidence against homology when it is quite clearly evidence for homology. So similarities are not due to common ancestry anyways. And that's why when you open their books, they say similarities are due to common ancestry. They say the human being is the common ancestor of a horse and a, and a, and a mouse. If he thinks science textbooks say that human beings are the common ancestor of a horse and a mouse, then I dread to think what else he is going to say in this video. What is the homology? Yeah, yeah. Where is the, the, the similarity? You know, I mean, it, where, is, it, it, where is the similarity between me and a mouse? You know? Well, if you think about it, I mean, you have two eyes, you have a mouth, you have a, the, a stomach. You look like a mouse. I think that I say Ours. that I'm saying that we have many similarities to them. Yeah, I mean, no, no, no. we are very different as well. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, I mean, it's just because we have the same what we call attributes. Yeah, yeah but I, hands. no, my point is, if you are, I don't know, a, a, an alien from another unit and I come here or just I see these two things and both of them have four uh, yeah four, four limbs a mouth two eyes like, yeah example, we're different the but horse, at the same the horse, time the, they look completely different right? no no we are completely but at the same time don't you I mean we have a nose we have ears we have eyes you yeah, say that's insane no problem but just just because you have the, this is not what, 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 what homology is what you were using homology is that there is similarities in the, uh, the structure yeah I think that yeah, there are different levels of, of that's similarities why were, that's why you were saying different tigers because they look the same right yeah, yeah, they look yeah. very close yeah. but I'm saying I mean, there are different levels. Exactly. I'm using the same argument against you. I'm saying if this was the case, then why are they saying we come with the same uncommon ancestor with a, a, rat, a mouse and a rat a, 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 a horse? I mean, in a biological setting, homology is similarity due to shared ancestry. He talks about humans, mice, and horses and that they look different. However, they share characteristics as all three are mammals. Humans and mice are both uarchontogliers which is a clade and a superorder of mammals. Mice are rodents, whereas humans are primates. This relationship has been confirmed through genetic analysis. Horses are Lorassotherians, which is a superorder of placental mammals. All humans and mice are uarchontogliers. The point yeah. is, any evidence you bring before now, I'll, I'll debunk it. You say it one by one, right? Because I've done the research, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, I know, I I'm know. I'm not I just know. saying that. Like, look, for example, they use the, the whale. You say the whale, the whale, they have pelvis. They have? Pelvis. Pelvis is a bone in the end of the whale, right? They say these bo two bones were two legs, actually, and it was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know, I know. Yeah. And this, you would open books like Biology uh, by Evans and Johnson, 2017 edition, 2018. This is by professor, by academics. And we have a research 50 years ago saying that the pelvis of the whales are not vestigial organs. Do you know what the vestigial organs are? The, the organs that used to be useful and not yeah, yeah. anymore, yeah. They say they're not vestigial organs, they're very useful, they use it for mating, they use it for different functions. So look, they lie to you even on their own research, they say to you, look, it's useful. Okay, okay but let me write in 2017, it's not useful. I covered vestigial organs in my series of four videos. I need to reiterate that vestigiality refers to organisms retaining organs that have seemingly lost their original function does not mean that the organ is completely useless as it can have a rudimentary or secondary function. The point is they want to convince someone like you and many other people in the West. There's a documentary on that. It's called The Expelled. They expelled. You will see people expelled from their jobs. Professor Kadir's excommunicated. Just right. because they deny evolution or, they, or deny any God or put God in the research, they excommunicate them. See these people, God is against science according to them, right? So if you mention this, yeah. go, go away. You're not an academic, right? I'm Nobody should take Expelled, this piece of garbage for a film, seriously. A simple search will show how it is nothing more than a conspiracy theory rant lacking any science credentials. 
the rest of the video moves away from science to theology. Thank you for watching and please let me know what you think in the comments section.